welcome back. Da da da. Because I'm white and I have all the permission to do that. But no, welcome back to my third or fourth podcast now. I don't know yet. Eh, one of those numbers. Um, hello. I forgot to mention earlier two walls that I forgot, like, I failed to mention about releasing is the. Ro- or not, not Ro- uh, no, it's the Radical Katana and the Radical Tremendous Pearl. I do not have the specs on those because I did not do anything today. I planned out nothing for this. I was like, I need to record a video. And yeah, so here I am now, ready to record another 40 minutes of you having to deal with me talk about whatever I talk about because I don't even know at this point what I talk about because I'm insane. I just say talk about a lot and people just assume I know what I'm talking about. Spitting bars, no. Not spitting bars at all. I honestly don't know what to talk about today. I mean, nothing's really happened. Bowling World boring. Kidding, Bowling World's always fun. But Bowling World is just not there right now. So, yeah. But, I do remember one thing. I'm going to talk about, actually, I know exactly what I'm going to talk about. Woohoo. Simon. What I'm going to talk about is the debate. Was PBA back in the day harder than it is now? Or, let me phrase that, is bowling in general, back in the day, harder than it is now? So when I say back in the day, I'm talking about 70s and all that. No. That's like, the thing is, you can't really compare the two. Because it's two completely different styles of bowling, right? I'm going to go on like a little side tangent, or not tangent, but segment here about the 70s and the earlier bowlings. Earlier bowlings. Originally started with the 40s, in my opinion, is when bowling started gaining its big popularity. 40s, you had people who threw with only two fingers. You would use your middle finger and your thumb. Two finger bowling balls, rubber bowling balls, and wooden bowling balls. Actually, just wooden bowling balls at the time. It later developed rubber. We have that, and that is the true originator of the fun. And then eventually it went to rubber, and then this is where the argument starts coming in. Because over the time, the technology developed. So let's stick with the 70s area, because I like the 70s and 80s bowling area, that was a good time. 70s and 80s, you have big names like Mark Roth, Marshall Holman, um, even though those were more 80s guys really, I mean, you have uh, Earl Anthony, he's one of the greatest of all time, he was number two, and I mean, he was phenomenal. And you have people who are going out of the prime, or really more 60s area, Dick Webber, and all the and you start to see how people are growing up. Well, by the time they hit the 70s, like the late 70s, people have lost the main idols of bowling. You didn't have any more Dick Webbers out there. You didn't have any of them. So now you're looking at the 70s where the introduction eventually of urethane bowling balls. Urethane bowling balls at this time, though, contained a pancake weight block or core. Like that. Probably about that big around. And they'd be at the top of the ball. And people would still throw rubber, and that's just how it was. Rubber and um, urethane, and eventually plastic, but we'll get to that later, about a different day probably. So we have this generation where in the, I'll probably say the shot makers era. The shot makers era is the 40s all the way up to the 70s. It's the true shot makers era of where... You have to be good at shooting something. You have to be able to shoot straight. You have to be able to hit the pocket. You have to be able to shoot your spares, period. There's no arguing that. And back then, it was a shot maker's league. You were required to be good at what you do if you want to make any sort of money in PBA. You were required to be able to throw it at the pocket and, you know, somehow kick out those 10 pins. That's just how things were. That's how bowling was back then. Oil didn't really come much into play. They sprayed it down on the lane with a little gun or pump or whatever they used, and it would just go out, whatever the lane guy was like, I want to put this out there, and he'll do it, right? They would just put out distance. It really didn't matter what the oil was, though, honestly, because that's just, nobody had any form of real they no one really had true amounts of rotation or anything like that. It was all end over end roll, throwing at the pocket, 
keeping your spares up, and that's all that matters. It was made for shop makers. Those who got out of the most trouble, who could keep clean, would be the best. And although that does relate to today's modern game, it's a big difference. So I got into an argument recently, more of an honest discussion, Thursday I think it was. And no, it was month, it was Tuesday. Where I was talking to this guy about why I believe that the bullying now is harder than it was back then. That's why I'm bringing this all up. And he said, back then, you had to be good. You didn't have balls that would guide it to the pocket. You had to actually be able to hit the pocket every time because there's no room for hold, no room for error, and you would have to pick up your spares. And yes, that is true. Back through the 60s, 70s era, era, oh, you had to pick up spares. If you didn't pick up spares, you would have never won anything. You had to be able to leave just 10 pins. That's just how it was back then. And if you threw a three-bagger or a four-bagger, then yeah, that's great. That's impressive. That's honestly one of the most impressive achievements you probably could have done back then. I mean, in 300, I mean, 300s nowadays are thrown. You could throw one every other night. You never know. But back then, it was, it was a rarity. You throw 300, you're special. You're really special, right? But what he was getting at was that we have it made for us. So he was talking about the youth now. And he said the reason why people have dropped out of the sport, now this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, people drop out of the sport because it's too easy. No. I know this is an older person talking. So they're going to think, oh, nowadays everything is easier. But they said, oh, with my experience, everything nowadays is easier. And I say, well, why can't you keep up with us then? And they say, well, I'm not in my prime anymore. And it's like, back in your prime, you still couldn't keep up with us. Because they were shot makers and they were spare shooters. But I've learned this. And if you can't throw strikes, you cannot win. I don't care what any coach says. Yes, spare shooting is important. Yes, it's very crucial. And you need to be able to shoot spares. But if you can't strike... I hate to break it to you, you're never going to go anywhere. You can't win tournaments anymore just throwing spares. Back then, you could throw spares all you want, and you would win tournaments, or you'd finish top five. Nowadays, if you don't throw strikes, you're not going to finish anywhere near the top 15, top 20, top 25, or even make money. You're not going to make money at all. Nowadays, it is a scoring, and honestly, it's way harder now than it is back then. This guy would say that, oh, people back in my day would kill the people nowadays. No, they wouldn't. People back in his days were so good at what they did, if they were trying to put into a new game, a new modern style of game, they would never be able to adapt and they would be terrible. I mean, I'm not saying terrible, I mean, they'd still be great spare shoes, but they would be only averaging 170s, because all they do is spares. Um, there's many reasons to this, too. For instance, back then, you're not throwing stuff that drives through the pocket as well. It's more deflecty. You have rubber bowling balls. You have plastic bowling balls. You have urethane bowling balls with pancake cores in them. And that's just not what it is. I mean, in my closet over there, I have one of the older AMF match ones. I have Brunswick Black Beauty, the original Brunswick Black Beauty. And I used to have a yellow dot, the original yellow dot. But, I mean, you look at this stuff and you say, well, yeah, back then they had less to work with and they still threw 200s on that. Yes. But, but when they threw 200s, they got very lucky. And they were very good spare shooters. And that's just how it was back then. Nowadays, it's more about striking. So it's weird to compare the shot maker's error to what I call now the scoring error. We're in two different eras here. I would say 1980s onward has been the scores error. If you don't score high, you're not winning. So we have the shot maker's error, the scoring error. Shot maker's error is like saying, it's like comparing, this is honestly like comparing apples to oranges because they're so different in what they actually do. We have this time where people were spare shooting and like barely missing pocket ever. And there's just 10 pins and 10 pins and seven pins and five pins and five, seven pins and five, sevens and five pins and seven, ten splits and all those fun numbers. Eight, ten splits, seven, nine splits. It doesn't matter. That's all they did. Than back in their day. But now we go to the shot making where we have times where we don't even hit pocket and we strike. Like, so now by now just hearing me say about what this is, 
I have no argument over here, right? But no, there is an argument. Nowadays, it's a lot harder for many reasons. One, we have to worry about equipment. Back in the 70s and 60s and 50s and 40s and 30s and all that fun stuff, back in that day, you didn't have to worry about changing bulbs. You didn't have to worry about oil breaking down. You never had to worry about any of that because you threw it at the pocket. But nowadays, we can't do that. I mean, name a single straight bowler out there who has as much hand as one of the old school bowlers from the 70s. There's not a single one out there. Walter Ray Williams Jr. has a lot more hand than some of the old school 60s and 70s bowlers. Really, he does. And he's in his 50s now. I mean, that's just how it is. We're not in this, we're in a different era. So why? Why, is, well, what do we, why can't we just throw it straight at the pocket? Well, because now if we throw it straight at the pocket, we're not going to carry anything. It's just going to be 10 pins, just like them. So when I see these old guys talking about, oh, how all nowadays all the new guys just all they do is crank the ball and they hook the ball and they, they throw strikes like it's crazy and easy and all that stuff. And all they're doing is just wasting time and this is way too easy and all that stuff. It, it annoys me. It really does because it's not like that. We have to worry about now also different oil. Oh, boy. Any guy from the 70s and all that, they can tell you all they want about oil. Be like, oh, we have a lot harder stuff. Everything was flat. No, it wasn't. You had a guy go out there and spray down whatever pattern he wanted to. It was never going to be the same. And while that may be harder, it didn't come into play. If they stripped the lane of the wood lanes dull and completely dry and the topography was off and all that, all they had to do is still throw it straight at the pocket. That's all that mattered. If you could throw it straight at the pocket, you're going to be fine back then. Nowadays, we can't do that. With synthetic lanes and a lot of oil on the lanes, the volumes are so much higher, and we have patterns we have to go around. We have to worry about certain things that we do. We have to make sure every little bit of our physical game lines up so we can throw an accurate shot. Because let's say we get on something like the U.S. Open from 2015, which was a 1-to-1 -one -one ratio, 39-foot pattern with a foot above, I think it was, something like that. It was extremely flat. Like, there was no room for error. If we get on something that, like that now, if we miss one little bore, we're never going to strike. And if an old guy gets on that, and all they're doing is starting to share the pocket, they're not going to strike. And so what's with the, all the hooking, though? Like, why can't we play straighter with just angles? Because some people aren't all like that anymore. It's fun to watch a ball when you stand left and throw it right and it comes back and smashes pop pins and pins go flying left and right and you know it sounds like an explosion or somebody got shot in the parking lot. That's awesome and we love that. We're just humans. We're not robots. We have emotions and when we see something like that, that just pleases the eye. Anybody, any open bowler who just comes to the bowling lane every once in a while, drink beer and play games and then bowl a few games with their friends, they will tell you that the coolest thing ever is when they see these guys hook the whole lane, where they see the ball go from here, and they spin it, and it goes around. They love that, and that's what brings people into the sport, because I remember wanting to do that. I remember, I don't think there's a single kid out there nowadays who didn't want to do that, who wanted to look at your Pete Webbers, and your Tommy Jones, and your EJ Tackett, and say, I want to do that. I want to hook that whole lane. That looks cool, right? And honestly, there's an actual reason for that. Nowadays, if you don't open up the lanes at all, you're not going to be able to bowl on some patterns because some patterns aren't fit for going straight. You won't be able to play straight. And if you can't play, if you can't play any other part of the lane, I've done this in other videos, if you can't adjust yourself, you'll never be able to strike. And I find it funny because with the way it oil is now, we have it so much more brutal because they didn't have to worry about oil patterns. Now we have to worry about oil patterns. Okay. Not to mention, we have to worry about what equipment we're throwing because the different equipment does different things. Back then, they brought one bowling ball. One bowling ball for everything. Nowadays, I mean, tomorrow, I'm bringing eight balls because I'm going to Prodigy. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just bringing my bag. I'm, I'm saying, well, this is what I'm bringing, this is what I'm bringing, this is what I'm bringing. And some of them have different layouts on them, and that's just how it happens. We don't have the ability to be blessed with not having to worry about oil or equipment that they did. That was a privilege for them. If they had our equipment back then, 
they wouldn't be able to strike or control it at all because they would have no idea what to do with it. It would hit the ground, it would read, and they would be like, this is hooking too much, it's trash. And they would throw it away. Because they wanted that straighter ball motion because they didn't realize what it actually did. Now, back to the big hook topic. If we're hooking the lane, that means we have a better chance of striking. Why do you think two-handers strike more than one-handers? They have more rev rate and they can open up the lane. The deeper you go left, the more angle you create. The more angle you create, the more entry angle you create. The more entry angle you create, and that is just physics. Pins tend to deflect better and they just fall down. Excuse me. So, why would an old person say that bowling now is too easy? That's a real good question. Because old people, they just want to say, oh, bowling now is, is too easy. You see these 250s, 260s, like they're nothing. And yes, we throw a lot of high scores, but we're also a lot more talented bowlers than they were back then. We are able to make our body so physically the same every shot that we're just dead on. And yeah, they're like, oh, well, we used to do that too. Yeah, but we do a lot more than they did. We carry better than they do. The reason you put revolutions on bowling ball is to help you carry. And why you put speed on the ball, help you carry. Back then they didn't know that, they didn't do it. And if they did it back then, and they were a high hook player, they were probably disliked. Because they're like, oh, that's not right. You shouldn't bowl that way. It's like when two-handing came into the scene. People were like, traditional styles, purist. They are like, well, that's not right. It's two different errors. We have one error where we have these people who are throwing spares and everything, and they're trying to say that their error was actually tougher than our error. And we say, why? Because look at us. I shot two thir or 222.8 average at a tournament once, and I got third in that tournament. Third. Back then, you shoot a 200 average, you're guaranteed top five. Nowadays, you don't shoot anything over 220, you're not going to be anything. And I hate to say that because it's true though. If you're not averaging 220, 230 on sports shots, most people won't even consider you a good sports shot bowler. They won't consider you a tournament bowler because really, if you want to actually make money in bowling, you're going to have to average over 230, 240. And it's frustrating sometimes to deal with because that's brutally hard. Yes, that's spare shooting. But also, that's throwing strikes. Averaging 240, that means you hit, you leave three spares throughout a whole game. Three spares. Actually, four spares. Four or five spares throughout a whole game. The rest is strikes. So you have three games set. That's 15 spares out of possible 36 strikes. That's 21 strikes. That's a lot of strikes. That means 21 divided by 36, that gives you around like... That's around 70% striking. You must strike at least around 70% to actually be successful nowadays. They didn't have to do that back then. It's a completely different time period we're talking about. And they also, I this guy used this, and he said, well, nowadays shots are aimed at the pocket. Like, you guys, the oil pattern is aimed towards the pocket. No. It's not that. We don't have the oil pattern to aim at the pocket. It's what we do to the ball that makes it go to the pocket. And I hate breaking it to anybody who thinks this, but if you think we have it easy and that it's aimed at the pocket, I will put any single one of you old school bowlers, any one of them, come meet up with me. I'll throw any old school bowling ball you want. And I say on any new pattern, and I guarantee you, I'll let you throw new equipment and I'll go get out world bowling ball. And if you don't beat me silly, then you're just that bad of a bowler, honestly. It's new equipment makes it easier, yes. But does it make the sport easier? No. Old school equipment, you can trust old school equipment. You know why? Because it didn't read too much or too little on every shot. Old school equipment, I've thrown rubber. I've had rubber bowling balls drilled for me. I can I've had plastic bowling balls from the 70s. Drilled for me. I've had rubber bowling balls from the 70s drilled for me. All that fun stuff. I can aim that ball in the pocket and trust it every time. And I'll just have carry issues. New equipment. Sometimes it tracks a little too much. And it flares a little too much. Or sometimes it doesn't track enough. And it flares not enough. And then it doesn't hit pocket. And you, and you can't do anything about that. That's just how the ball rotates. 
they didn't have to worry about that back then. Nowadays, it's harder to control our equipment than it was back then. So what they say, well, why don't you throw easier stuff? Because there's no rubber bowling balls on the market anymore because you can't carry with them. That's why bowlers nowadays are so much better is because we learned how to manipulate ourselves and manipulate bowling balls so that whenever we throw them, they go on the lane the way we want them to and they do what we do. They, we do, they do what we want them to do. We don't have to worry about 10 pins. We have to worry about um, just in general not striking. And the debate that old bowling is harder than it is now is so far-fetched because of the fact that they're two different times. You can't say that basketball in the 70s was better than basketball in the 2010s because it's two different times. Or in the 1970s, you could punch a guy basically in a game and not get kicked out of the league. Nowadays, if you touch a guy, it seems like you'll get it suspended for two months. I mean, Curry threw a mouthpiece and got fined. He threw a mouthpiece. All he did, and he got fined. And got suspended, I think, for like six games. Or something like that. It was crazy. I don't remember all of it. Back then, in the 70s bowling, you didn't have to shoot high, though. The scoring paces were lower. Spare shooting was all you had to be good at. Nowadays, you have to strike. And if you don't strike, you will be left behind in the dust. I don't care how good you spare shoot. You can be a 100% spare shooter. But if you only shoot 20% strikes, you'll never go anywhere. I care. I guarantee it to you. No matter what pattern you're on, it doesn't matter. And back to the topic of people saying that, well, the equipment now makes it so it goes to the pocket. No. I cannot put a bowling ball on that lane. Just set it down and it goes to the pocket. That is physically impossible. Uh, one of Newton's laws states but an object in motion must stay in motion and an object in rest stays at rest. That's Newton's first law, actually. And so you're saying that nowadays our equipment just goes to the pocket? Well, no. It's because of the chemistry in the bowling ball, the physics of the weight block and how the ball rotates. And that's what really makes the ball go to the pocket. And that's all because of rotation. Yeah, I can't set a bowling ball on the lane and it stay and put it at rest and then it just start going towards the pocket. It doesn't work that way. Bowling doesn't work that way. Physics doesn't work that way. And I hate breaking to the old timers out there who are like, oh, back in my day, you know, we could throw one strike and nine spare out and we would win. Well, we can't do that anymore. Your equipment doesn't, our equipment doesn't allow us to do that. Also, just because we strike more doesn't mean it's easier. It just means we're better. <laughs> no offense to any of the old school bowlers out there, but bowling now is, if you take it, I guarantee you this. You get one of your old school bowlers in his prime. I don't care how great he is. I don't care. Let's say, let's take Earl Anthony. In his prime, Earl Anthony. Put him out on the PBA Tour now. I'm talking about Earl Anthony in his prime on the PBA Tour now with the equipment he was using back then. And he would struggle. He wouldn't be a no-namer. Period. Dick Weber, same case. No one would know who Dick Weber was if he was throwing the old stuff he did back then. They would have to be throwing new equipment. They would have to learn about oil patterns. They would have to learn what equipment to do. They had to learn different drillings. They would have to learn different layouts. Back then, you had three layouts. You had a spare layout, a stacked layout, and a low flare layout. You have your going to hook a decent amount, going to hook nothing, and going to hook just a little bit. And that's all you had. And most of them didn't even do that. All they would do is power leverage and stack layouts, and that's it. Period. There's and I challenge any old timer to say that they did a layout like a pin above the bridge layout or a pin below the ridge with a P2 weight hole kicked out or a low flare layout with a motion hole drilled into it. I, I guarantee you not a single old timer who has any memory whatsoever will say they did that. And it, it agitates me when these old schoolers come out and say, like I said, all now and day, all, you guys all you have to do is throw strikes and you don't know how to shoot spares. Well, our spare shooters now are actually better spare shooters than they were. And I hate dissing old guys because I love old bowling as much as the next. But in the 80s, all the way up to the 2010s era, where we're in, the, uh, the striking era, the scoring era, as I called it earlier, actually, our spare shooting's gone up too. Because we can't just strike. We have to throw spares. The other day, I went strike, seven miss, strike all the way to like the ninth frame, eight miss, strike out. And I shot like a 220, 230, something like that. I don't remember. Because we have to shoot spares. Spares are so crucial now because one spare can win us a match. 
Sure, we had to strike 10 times that match and make that one spare, but it still shows that we have to strike and spare, shoot. And I, and it's just frustrating because I look at things like this and I say, I understand where you're coming from, but if you put a bullet back then in our era, they couldn't strike to save their life and they probably couldn't even be good. And you put one of our bullets in their era with their equipment they have now, with our equipment, they couldn't strike either. They'd be so lost out there, it'd be nothing. But then again, a person from our era, I mean, take myself for example. If you put me back in the 60s with the equipment I have now, what I would do, just fly my hand out and chuck it. That's all you could do back then. And you know what? That's okay. I'm okay with that. I know a lot of bullets who have gone to tournaments and it gets so burned up that they just go to a spare ball and they just throw it at the 1-3. Because we do that now. But a bowler back then, they never had to learn how to hook the lane. Hooking the lane was a taboo. It was unorthodox and it wasn't really seen. The first real person, or really in my opinion, to develop a hand, like the amount of rev rate, was Amaletto Monticelli from Venezuela. But then again, people said he was awful because his back swing was too high and things like that. We're in an era now where you get people like me go back then. <laughs> they would say, oh, you have no chance of ever being successful. You, you try doing too much with the ball. You throw it way too hard. You have too high of a backswing. But that's just how it is. So I really, I don't know why I went on this rant so long, but this really got to me because nowadays you have to average 230 to be good. Back then you had to average 200. That's 30 pin difference. That's two strikes. Right. Well, nowadays, not only do you add, you know, average seventy percent of your strikes, you also have to average like ninety percent of your spares, all spares, period. Back then, yeah, you might have to average one hundred percent of your spares, but you only had to average ten percent of your strikes. Nowadays, we have equipment that can mess up, and we have no control over it. Back then, they didn't have equipment that messed up at all. Nowadays, we have to deal with a lot more competitive spirit. We have to deal with a lot better bowlers. We have to deal with a lot higher scores. We have to deal with a lot of bad breaks. Back then, they didn't have to deal with much. They had bad breaks, surely, but I mean, back then it was head to head. Everybody had around the same average because nobody could strike. And that's just how it is. It's two different eras, and you can't compare them. They're separated. A guy the other day told me that the um, the recent 900 poll was easy. I laughed in his face. And that's one of the most disrespectful things I can ever do is laugh in your face. And if I laugh in your face and tell you you're stupid, I hate to break it to you, but there's I don't do that to old people. I don't do that to many people in general unless you really insult me. And when I do that, it's only usually to teenagers who really go on my nerves or say something really, really stupid. But when you say something like a 900 is easy, when you say anything like a 300 is easy, you don't know bowling. It's a physical thing for you to have your heart rate going. And when your heart rate goes, it gets faster and faster as that momentum builds, as that energy builds. The testosterone gets flowing or the adrenaline gets flowing and you're just pumping and everything's, everything's becoming silent and you get freaked out because you're not used to it. I don't care how many times somebody's thrown 300, they still will say, yeah, that last shot on the 10th, you know, I was a little nervous about that one. Because it's just how humans are. You can't say a 300 is easy, period. To you, if you say a 300 is easy, go out there and throw a 300 real quick. Anybody, any of my subscribers, my 30 subscribers I have, if you think a 300 is easy, go out there and do it. Right now. Camera focus. I'm in a mad mood. I want you to like focus on me. There we go. Mad. If you say a 300 is easy, you're a liar. Period. You can have a thousand three hundred games, and you will still say, "Yeah, it was kind of hard that last shot on the tenth one." Every one of them, because there's you always gonna be nervous, just a little bit. You're gonna have your heart beat. Was I nervous when I had my two ninety nine game? I wasn't really nervous. I was just so amped up. Everybody has their own way. Like I get amped up, and I try calming everything down. Was I nervous? A little bit, yeah. But that's just how it is. So when you say a nine hundred is easy. Um, to you, I say, you go do it then. If it's so easy nowadays, you go do it. If you think it's such an easy accomplishment, go do it. Why has there only been 32 of them bullet, I think it is? Why? 
Why has there only been 32 of them if, you know, it's so easy? If it was so easy, everybody would be doing it. You would have a 900, I would have a 900, everybody would have a 900. It's like an Oprah Winfrey show. I don't know if I'm going to get sued for that. I shouldn't be, but it's like Oprah Winfrey show. Everybody gets a car. Everybody gets a 900. Everybody gets a 300. Not everybody pulls 300s and 900s like it's nothing. Yes, they're easier now because our equipment's better. I'm sorry. Would you like me to go back in time and give you some equipment if it doesn't work that way? I'm sorry. We're better bowlers now, so we have the ability to throw higher sets. I'm sorry. That's just how life is. Back then... You can shoot spares better than us, okay? That's a fair off. That's a fair off. And I mean, to some extent, we're better spare shooters now. But any old school bowler who wants to argue this with me, I will gladly argue with you. I am fully capable as a sixteen-year-old male. I will argue grim, uh, teeth and nail. I will rip my way through this argument and show you exactly every little detail if I have to. I will spend hours on hours showing you why nowadays and back then can't be compared so you can't say a 900 nowadays is easy because it's not if it was easy everybody would be doing it and if you say a 900 is easy i still go and say i challenge you go shoot 900 real quick you said it was easy why can't you do it are you just that bad come on you can't say that kind of thing that really gets on my nerves because it's just not true bowling in general nowadays is harder than it was back then for us and for them it's harder then than it is now but guess what it's two different errors you can't change time you can't have someone from now go back then you can't have someone back then go here because it doesn't work that way we don't have time travel we don't have that it don't work it's just frustrating because if you're going to compare these two it's so hard because it's so different we're focused on scoring you're focused on shot making Okay, so you're going to say we get some more room on oil patterns? Well, yeah, because our equipment allows us to. That equipment also makes room bad. So if I miss inside, it's going through the nose and I'm going to leave an awful split. Back then, you miss inside, you're going to carry out, you know, if you miss a board inside back then, you're going to trip out a four pin or leave a four pin or something easy to pick up. We miss a board inside now, we're leaving, you know, seven pin splits, we're going through the nose, we're leaving big fours, big churches, all that fun stuff. And it's just... Honestly, I hate people who want to argue two different generations for anything because it doesn't apply to each other. You can't say X equals Y when Y is something completely different than X. You can't say X is equal to Y if X equals uh, 1900 and Y equals 2000 because 1900 doesn't equal 2000. It just doesn't work that way. I just wanted to go on that ramble because somebody mentioned that to me and that argument blew my mind. Also, by the way, if I just repeated what I said, that's because like, yeah, somebody called and yeah, but I just wanted to sum that up. Uh, that's my podcast for the day. That's my Friday podcast. Yes. Um, maybe a video tomorrow. Don't know yet. We'll see. And for that, I think that'll be it for a day. And maybe a video someday. Also, we'll see on that one. But I will say to y'all, so 